Hey there, I'm Adam Hughes. I'm going to tell you what little I know about drawing eyeballs. Uh, people are always coming up and asking me, uh, hey, how do you draw an eye? How do you make it look round and how do you make it look wet? And there's a couple of tricks that I use that always can ensure an eye that has a little bit of life to it. Because that's what you want. You want it to, uh, to make it feel, make your drawing feel like there's an actual character you know, behind the eyes. You want to make them feel like they're alive. And you do that through facial expressions and you do that through body language. But if the eyes look really alive, uh, that'll really help your character look like a real person. Or at least like they're believably real. All right, we're just gonna do it big and sloppy here. So we get this. Uh... And of course, cause it's me, I'm gonna draw a woman's eye. It's in my contract with God. Uh, one of the things to, to always bear in mind when you're drawing an eye is pe people have a tendency to draw eyes as if they're just painted onto the outside of someone's face. And you have to remember that an eye is, if you're looking at it from the side uh, in profile, uh, the human eye is round like that. So it's a curved surface. We all know how to draw spheres. I'm assuming you're here because you at least can you know, draw basic shapes. Uh, it, the eye is a is a sphere, but it's covered by the eyelids, which actually cover the eye like that. So one of the things that one of the mistakes that people make when they're drawing an eye is they don't give the impression that there is this shape sitting on top of the sphere. And it boils down to something as simple as uh, when you have that upper lid, you draw you know a shadow, like I've done here. You draw a shadow indicating the uh, you know where the, the the brow meets the lid you can draw uh, a shadow where the uh, the lid meets the eyeball and if you wanted to you could draw a highlight on the bottom lid to show the the light catching it all these things give it a sense of um, I guess it's a, a sense of step and repeat you know it's 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 you know the plane of the eyelid step plane of the eyeball step plane of the lower lid so keep that in mind that'll help you out all right now when you're drawing the eye um, again, we're going to go to the, the fabulous profile. When you're drawing an eye, one of the things to remember is your eye is shaped like that. And it's got this clear bit. Uh, don't ask me, I'm not an optometrist. Uh, but that's all, all, the, all the neat, colorful information, like the iris and the pupil and that kind of stuff. Uh, is is recorded on the this little flat disc right here and the thing is is it's got this curved shape kind of like shape like a contact lens over top of it made of this transparent wet you know glassy looking uh, substance again consult your optometrist for if, if you're looking for the Latin um, now that's a perfectly acceptable eyeball, but it doesn't really it doesn't really sing. It doesn't really say, "Hey, I'm 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 wet. I'm alive. I'm actually looking at you." So, one of the things to always keep in mind when you're doing an eye is what is the light source? Because the light source indicates two things: the specular highlight, which is the little glint of white you see in someone's eye, and also at what angle the the light's going to refract through that lens. The light's going to hit here and then be skewed across the, 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 the iris and the pupil. Uh, practical upshot of that is if you have, let me start with a slightly lighter color. If you have light coming this way, you're going to have a highlight on the eye right there. And what happens is, is the light is coming this way, hitting the, the, the outer part of the eye, and then diffusing across the surface of the, uh, the iris and the pupil. And what that does is, it's sort of like a, a, like a, a cone of light. So, great way 
to describe that. And this also works for any color eye. You can do really light blue and green eyes. You can do this with really dark chocolatey brown eyes. Uh, this, this, this works for everything. So we have the slightly darker or slightly lighter tone. I'm gonna come in with some C5, some cool gray five. And what, what it is is the light is coming, as I said before, and it's hitting the eye here, which is why we see the reflection of the light source. That's all a specular highlight is on an eyeball, is a reflection of the light source. And the light's hitting it there and then diffusing across the eye. And it, what it does is it creates a disk of light at, at an angle. It's not perfectly centered um, across the surface. And... Practical upshot of that is it it, it has this the, the it has the look of uh, a light refract, refracting off of a lens, which is exactly all it is. But some some a trick as simple as this can make any character's eye look alive. And you can do this in close-ups. You can do it uh, in a character that's across the side of the room. Um, it's uh, it, it works very very well. And if you want to. If you want to give your eyeball a little bit of life, I've discovered that the uh, uh, the colonial expression about not firing until the whites of their eyes has ruined a million artists because eyes are not white. And uh, the one thing you can do to really help sell an eye is to put some sort of value in there, even if it's your lightest value. I find personally that if you save white, if you save white just for your highlights, you do yourself a great big favor. All right. Put a little bit of shading in just to give the eye a little, uh, you know, a little roundness. Again, we're drawing a, we're drawing a sphere. That's all it is. And here's that, uh, here's that shadow I was talking about earlier. If you put a little bit of a hard edge shadow, you know, the, the, the shadow on the eyeball needs to be soft edged because we're turning away from the light. Uh, but the shadow cast by the upper lid is going to be a nice hard edged shadow. And throw that on there. Even the... You can even throw it on the actual iris and pupil. And, you know, a couple of tricks for making an eye look three-dimensional, making it look wet, and most importantly, making it look alive. Uh, I'm Adam Hughes. Thank you for joining me. Check out my book, Cover Round, available where all fine books are sold, as well as on the Internet. Uh, I can be found at deviantart.com.